How's it going, guys? John, the basic expert here, and it's been a while. You doing well? I hope so. I've I've just been super busy um, trying to well, write and get Makuhito into the country, so I've sort of really neglected this channel, and uh, it wasn't intentional, but, you know, certain things had to take precedence over others, and, uh, you know, it's just been uh, not the easiest thing trying to fulfill a Kickstarter. Uh, surprise, surprise. But I hope you're well, and to those that support the channel, I am still grateful that you've done so throughout all this time with my sporadic streaming and uh, release of content. And in this particular video, I wanted to jump into this and talk about OD&D some more, Zero E Dungeons and & Dragons, and uh, continue this discussion that we've kind of had over the last few months about the lost D&D and pointing out some of the little intricacies and, and weird things that are in these original rules that people sort of forget about, uh, they ignore, or um, some people even have the audacity to tell me that it's just not in the book, despite literally being there, uh, or that I'm wrong. I don't know what to say about that. But I wanted to continue talking about that and sort of pointing out some of these things, and in this particular video, I wanted to talk about character creation and just how right from the start creating a character in zero e is incredibly different from most any other role-playing game that you would play in a modern setting so let's dive into it and talk about how this game is just so different from every other game out there so one of the first things you'll notice as you peruse the volume or book one of the three little brown books the little tan books that were in the white box or in the wood paneled box doesn't matter what version you got but the one thing you'll notice is that you are only given three classes at a, as a player. And those are Fighting Man. It wasn't called the Fighter yet. It's called Fighting Man. You have the Magic User and you have the Cleric. Those three classes. And one, This is one of the first things I've discovered as I've sort of dived into Zero E and attempted to understand this game on a deeper level than, than I feel like a lot of people have tried. Uh, and obviously you notice that what a lot of people consider the four core classes is absent here. Namely, the thief is absent here. And I don't really find that missing a thief is a problem. I've been running my own game, which is a zero E clone called white box. Link will be in the video description where you can download it for free on my uh, website, or you can give me a buck 50 on drive through RPG for the PDF or get a physical copy on Lulu or drive through RPG as well. But I've been running that, which is essentially was me just trying to condense down the three LBBs and chainmail, as I would use it, into a single volume so that I just have a single book to reference and trying to reference four books, which is kind of annoying. That was kind of the whole point of it. And one thing I've noticed in running games of Zero E using this sort of compiled set of rules that I've done is that it is not detrimental. The, the game isn't broken. It isn't less fun. And it isn't... Um, bad to have the thief missing and i was quite surprised by discovering this because for so often we're you know especially within the old school renaissance scene in the osr a lot of people have this idea that you need to have the four core classes and the thief is considered one of those and one of the interesting things about all of this is that and we'll get to this in later aspects of the game itself but a lot of those three core classes already sort of cover the basis that you would have and really like you know running into a locked uh treasure chest or a locked door like all the doors in zero e are stuck there's no what, what's the point of picking those locks you know uh if there's a locked chest you can just you know break it with the pommel of your sword or with an axe or something like that you know it's going to be noisy but you're walking around with a torch anyways so we'll get to that in a second too which changes a lot of things too like stealth stealthiness and a lot of these things can be handled in many different ways that do not require a thief and so far it's worked out quite well for my play groups and my solo gaming as well with white box and zero e how do we handle sneaking and surprise in a in a game where you don't have a thief class class and you don't have the percentile skill rolls that you would later get in the Greyhawk uh, supplement, or which also use D6s. Again, you can use Surprise. Surprise is a nifty little 
mechanic that can be, I mean, it's already in the rules. You're not going to break anything by using it. You don't have to homebrew anything. It's, it's just literally a rule in the, in the books that you can use and apply to, to stealth checks. And, uh, I've done this to great effect in my games. If the players are purposely moving through the dungeon cautiously, let's say, for instance, there's a magic user with the Infravision spell, and he casts that spell on himself, or let's say the fighting man who's maybe in the front lines leading the party. Um, and so the the fighting man can see in the dark, and he is moving forward, and he's they're specifically saying maybe even they want to move a little slower and quietly. So maybe their movement rate is cut in half, let's say. Uh, as a referee, you rule that. And so they're moving along, and you roll a random encounter for some goblins ahead as a referee. Uh, since they're moving so cautiously, you can determine, well, I don't need to check surprise for them. They're purposely moving stealthily and carefully through the dungeon. They're slowed, They're moving slower, so they're going to be hitting more random encounters, but the plus side is uh, they're not going to be as surprised as easily, unless the monsters themselves are trying to move stealthily through the dungeon as well. Which is totally possible but let's say that uh they're not using their torches so they're not uh you know gonna give away their position the fighter has the fighting man has a uh, infravision on himself and he's able to see ahead well that's not a problem you can still roll surprise for the goblins and maybe you want to give the the bonus the uh, a bonus to the range of success on that. Maybe you want to make it a fifty percent chance, or even a, even even more. And you would do that by increasing the range. The default range for surprise is on a one to two, but you could say one to three, or you could say one to four. Let's say um, maybe the fighting man has chosen to wear a lighter armor. He's wearing leather armor. Maybe he's wearing chain armor. He's not wearing full plate. And uh, the cleric is maybe wearing chain armor or not wearing full plate. And obviously the magic user is wearing um, not, just his clothes, you know, just his magical robes. You can and maybe as a referee determine, okay, I'll give you guys a, um, you're moving slowly through the, dun the dungeon. I'm going to give you on a one to four, uh, you have surprise on these foes. You were snuck up on them. Because surprise means that the player or the, the person that is surprised is unaware of whoever it is that has happened upon them. And so it works perfectly for self. You don't need an extra mechanic for this. It's just inherent in the rules. It's just something that's already there. You just got to slightly apply it in a different way, in a different mechanical way than it maybe otherwise was intended. But this is where I like, this is how I, I guess you could say homebrew, where I take rules that are already in the game and I apply them in slightly different and unique ways to cover situations and to adjudicate situations that um, are not fully covered in the rules, such as stealth and sneaking. Again, surprise is already there. You don't need a homebrew system and you don't really need the thief class. And this is why I've kind of found that the three core classes, as I'm going to call them, of fighting man, magic user, and cleric is perfectly sufficient and on top of that, you know, the magic user, the cleric, they get spells that would later be redundant with a thief class. Um, you know, they, they have open lock spells, they have locate objects, they have ESP spells. They can use telepathy to try and sense living organisms that are nearby. So you get a lot of abilities within these other classes that were just in 1974 inherently had these abilities built into them via their spells. And again, they work perfectly sufficient for all the things that you'd want a thief to do. And the other thing about surprise is that a creature that is surprised, if combat is chosen to occur by those who gain surprise on that creature or character, uh, those creatures that gain surprise or characters that gain surprise get a full round of movement and attacks against their foes that are surprised. So it works perfectly well for ambushes yes you're not getting double damages like you would with the thief you're not getting um all those little fun things that i know make the thief fun but i'm well, all i'm saying is that it works perfectly sufficiently uh to have those core three classes and not have a thief but still use surprise for sneaking and stealth and all these other sorts of things that a thief would normally do so really like uh, a thief to me is not it's nice i like thieves i think thieves are really cool and they're fun you know um but they're not required to make the game work they're not uh in inherent to the game 
They are nice. They are a nice little addition. They're a nice little supplement to uh, the game, but they are not part of, I would say, the bare bones requirement to run a D and D game. And um, to me, like it's just been proven at the table that it's just not required. It's just not needed. So uh, that will be the first thing I think. You know, we'll end this video here because I don't want these videos to be too long. We're going to talk more about characters in a future video because it still gets even weirder as things go on things that might be surprising to uh osr people or even especially 5e people uh and more modern gamers that are just strange bizarre things to them i think they're quite unique and neat and things that we should look at seriously in order to really sort of enjoy this game where it's come from its roots and uh really sort of you know, make the games that we have at our table more enjoyable, more immersive, and uh, more fun. So stick around for more of that. If you like that kind of this kind of content, please like, subscribe, share the video too. It helps out the channel. Uh, if you want to support my channel, uh, you can support here on YouTube. Although I would prefer if you used Subscribe Star or my Gilded server, and I will have links to that in the video's description below. I have three different tiers. The most that you'd pay is five dollars a month to support the channel, and it helps me to be able to make more content regularly. And if I'm able to get more support and uh, devote more time to this channel because people are wanting to support that, like it just make my does motivate me and make my time uh allocation a lot more sensible in a lot of these things so again apologies that i've been gone for a while i hope this video was fun and interesting and insightful and gave you something to think about as far as running your old school games and maybe even tempts you to run zero e like a little three lbb uh and chainmail game i think it can be quite fun and i encourage you to try it and do it check out white box if you're intimidated by looking at the 3LBBs themselves, I try to do my best. It's not perfect, but I try to do my best to sort of consolidate the bare essentials of those rule, of all those rules, including the important aspects of chainmail, in order to make a, a game of, of 0E that is pretty complete, kind of crunchy, actually. And what we've found so far on the Gilded server, I think quite enjoyable to play and run. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. More content to come. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.